Hi, I'm Mark Honeybone from Property Ventures, and welcome to our weekly podcast where we interview prominent members of the investment community along with other professionals in the New Zealand property market. This is a free service from Property Ventures so that you can keep current and learn from some of the best around New Zealand. To check us out, take a look at propertyventures.co.nz. We hope you enjoy today's podcast. So hi and welcome back for another week uh, with the New Zealand Property Podcast and I've got my sometimes co-host Aaron Davis back so welcome along Aaron and uh, what's going on in auctions uh, these days? Well clearance rate Mark still looking really good sitting around 82% at the moment so plenty of activity and I actually had someone really clever turn up on the weekend and they right. gave me a random number at the start of the auction so I gave them a lot of respect so good on them. <laughs> it might have been someone that told them to do that through you telling me to do that. Well more should. <laughs> Especially if the auctioneer's got a scribe standing next to them and not that good at numbers. <laughs> random numbers. And just on that, a random number, is that a random, a fair sort of figure? Or is it still low building with a random number? No, 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 just uh, a number with credibility. Like if it's a million dollar house, you turn up and you say $874,500. Thank you, Mr. Auctioneer. Excellent. Right, he'll take me to 900. No, no, I'll give you 36 and a half on top of that. Thank you. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> oh, that's good. So, uh, so the occupancy, oh, sorry, the occupancy, the uh, the clearance rates are a lot uh, up a lot from what they were in December, November. Yep, yep still strong. REINZ have just put out the late, local um, latest stats, um, and it actually shows uh, the lakes and Otago Central, the ones that are really going gangbusters at the moment. I don't think the activities in Auckland, which it is, but. Um, other rural parts of the country are really running hot. So, wow, yeah. yeah. I just read this morning, 33% growth in Tarawa in the last 12 months. There yeah, you but go. see, Tarawa wasn't one of the hottest. Mm. Uh, Waikato, um, Central Otago, they were the ones with the biggest increases, so yeah. Right. Jolly good. Okay, well, that's good and good to have you back, Aaron, and hopefully you'll be back for the few more shows coming up. Um, today we've got Morgan Kilcher from Inspect House, not Inspector House, like he <laughs> just said he's cool, but Inspect House New Zealand, and he's going to talk about uh, things to look out for when you are buying a house and why you use a property inspector. So welcome to the show, Morgan. G'day, Mark. Hey, uh, thanks very much for having me on, uh, on board. Um, Great. Yeah, uh, I think it's good to um, let people know the basics, um, what can go wrong with buying a house and common problems. Yeah, absolutely, and that's why we got you here today to, to let everyone know. So just uh, to start the show off, um, you know, why do why do you get people coming to you to do a building inspection? Right. So the main the main reasons would be um, just to protect their financial um, purchase. Um, there's obvious problems of leaky leaky buildings, um, all sorts of problems that you hear about on the news and in the papers. Um, there's several several issues there we can find on site that are the main ones. Um, you got your cleaning issues, um, which lead to your weaver tightness problems. Um, you got foundation issues, another uh, main one, um, and then the big one at the moment actually is meth testing. Um, we're finding more and more houses um, testing positive for methamphetamine use, or even worse, um, a cookhouse. Yep. Yeah, no, so you don't want one of them. That's for sure. Certainly not. Uh, we'll, we'll move on to the meth testing a bit um, later on. So, so most people come to you when they've got the place under contract, or do you, do you actually get people come to you before they sell their own property? Yeah, good question. So we get we get both these things happen. Um, we're finding more and more now. It's not just the buyer that's getting the reports done. It's more than often the uh, the vendor. Um, reason being that it speeds up the selling process um, and takes away the ability, I guess, for the the buyer to come back um, once a, a price has already been negotiated, um, it, I guess it stops the, um, the buyer coming back and um, saying, here we go, here's, here's more problems, um, the problems we didn't know about and we want to renegotiate again. So it makes the process cleaner um, and yeah, faster for the, uh, for the seller. Morgan, do you, do you feel like you have a conflict of interest? Certainly, you know, there's certainly um, doing one for the vendor, right? The vendor pays you money, yes, and then you write a report going, "Jesus, I can't tell him this thing's shag." Right? <laughs> Good question. But if, if the buyer's paying you, well, you know, like it's just it's common sort of. Yeah, yeah. Well, what happens there is we um, we obviously can't do um, two reports on the same house for a vendor and a seller. Um, 
and um, there's often these issues come up. Um, we have a code of ethics. Hopefully, most guys do do inspections. Um, whereas, if there's any any conflict of interest involved, um, we need to be upfront with the people and um, not take the job on. Um, multiple um, times, this has come up where there's been in-laws, family members being involved with buying the house. Um, maybe one of my friends is an agent. Um, it could be a multiple of things, and we have to be pretty upfront about that because yeah. the courts have made it clear, very clear, that they don't take that lightly. Um, okay. Yeah. Yep. So. No, good. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's good. And, and the other thing, I suppose, with as you said, with a buyer, uh, the, sorry, a seller getting an inspection ready to go, you're trying to limit the reasons why people are going to say no, they don't want to buy the property. Certainly, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I, I've, I've got a, a property right now. It's a, a, a plaster cleaning. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. So yeah. I advise the vendors, you know, it's a one and a half million dollar property. So right. I, I advise them to get a report done, get a, get the, uh, the, the, what's it, the moisture testing. Moisture testing and therapy, And then yeah. you can show the buyers. And I suppose, Aaron, from your side, you, you're called in auctions. You want well, your agent who have done all that before you get up there. So yeah. more and more people are going to bid at it. You do, but I'm, I'm interested for Morgan. Like I'm, I'm saying to people all the time because they'll get a builder's report done that's saying, okay, it's clean. Mm -hmm. But then I'm looking at it going, cool, if it's not leaking now, it's going to leak at some stage in the future. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what the building inspection says, you've got to factor in it's got to be reclad at some stage if it's built in that period with non cavity. Certainly, you know. certainly. So you got um, 1991 to 2007, that was the main period where, um, especially monolithic cladding houses, um, were built without cavity systems. So that was a big risk area in that time frame. Um, because so would, would you buy a monolithic cladded house in that time frame that had a clean building report, but you're going, you know what, in 10, 20 years, this could be a problem for me? Personally, personally, I wouldn't buy a monolithic house. However, if they've got sufficient cavities in them and they're well painted, they've been proven to withstand the weather. Um, okay. So they, I think they've probably got a worse rap than what they deserve, to be honest, from what I've seen in the industry. The main thing is, is uh, a lot of them aren't well painted, um, and once again, the cavity systems. So, yep. two big issues to look for. So that well painted, having using the right product, is is really in, important. Is you know, yeah. I, I, for me, I'm, I'm going. Geez, you painted it. That's good. But right. is that really yeah. enough to secure the yeah, well, place dry? Yeah. Well, there's two types of paints. You see, um, you need to use a um, elastomastic based paint, and that's a paint that's got a rubber sort of core to it, if you like, and um, that that um, moves with the um, expansion, retraction of the house cladding, whereas if you go and use a standard paint, which a lot of folks do, um, it just doesn't cut the cut the cake and you'll find the water gets through the uh, to the cladding. So it's important you get these things checked out um, you know, before you buy a house because um, you could be in for a pretty expensive uh, lesson. Yeah, no, definitely. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's interesting. Um, another question, Morgan, as, a, as an investor, you know, these guys are getting building reports done all the time. How do they get the best value out of a building inspection, i.e., um, I don't consider they need to know that door jams are missing or latches are broken because you can kind of, any layman can know that in a, in a sense, as, you know, like as a foundation, yeah. it's foundation, it's <coughs> planning that they can speed up and go, well, this is the big ticket items that I really need to know. Yes, no, no, good question. So, what we try and do um, with our reports is um, mainly focus on significant defects rather than waste people's time on uh, minor issues. Um, yeah, so that's the main one. Um, mm. Okay. It, yeah, cause the other thing is I've, I've seen, it frustrates me sometimes, is, is we, um, we, you, get a, you get a builder report, right? You're hiring a builder to give you a report on the property. And all of a sudden, the buyer goes, it's a 1950s house, right, 60-odd years old. And they go, geez, there's all these things wrong with it. Well, yeah, of course there is. Mm. You, you've hired someone that's a special a special, you know, special you know, field, and to find things, as Aaron just said, like door stops and things not going, and it does put some people off. And, and um, you know, you just, I think you've always got to remember, usually down the bottom of the report, you'll have a summary, and that certainly, yeah. that yeah. that right? yeah. no, yeah. certainly, yeah. Certainly, um, yeah. Is that right? No, certainly, yeah. I think a lot of guys out there, they get a bit ridiculous um, and just, you know, focus on way too small of things. Um, yeah, it ends up just being a real um, a real problem for the um, the agent and the buyer as well because it puts them off 
often a good house. Yeah, um, and awesome. you get realistic, like you said. Um, you get a 50 year old house, it's going to have problems, just like you buy a 50 year old car, it's going to have problems. But yeah. it's about determining how big those problems are and what the costs are involved yeah. um, before you make those purchases. So, yeah, so keep in mind. Yep. I have a question around really old houses, right? Some of the stuff, the villas that were built in the 1910s, 1920s. Now, everything's got to have a best before date, just like Mark and I, right? <laughs> we're, we're, past our, we're past our best before date. But, you know, like now that those homes are getting to 100 years old, you know, you must see it as a builder. At some point in time, they just, you know, the, the borer stops holding hands. They just, it just lets yeah, go. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, so I, I, I guess you can break a house down to sort of two core things. Um, one of the big ones with the older house, especially 100 years old, is you end up with the foundations um, giving out. Yeah. Um, then, like you just mentioned, insect uh, infestation. So as long as we check for those main items in the older houses, um, normally you can tick most of your boxes off. But no, like you say, um, a lot of these properties, getting over 100 years old, sometimes I'll just, say, put a bulldozer through it. <laughs> um, because yeah. often that is the case and you just got to be realistic so does it still um, depend how it was built though or, and obviously yeah, how or what what was and the yeah. reason I asked that I just I went through a place in Epsom on Friday and I'm hoping you get the listing I'm not going to give you the address sorry everybody <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it's a 330 square metres it's 100 years old and I because. thought geez, this is going to be shocking went through it it's a beautiful place so, solid as yes it needs updating but it's got beautiful wooden features the floor was Rock okay. solid the whole way, mm. and I'll go. Wow, I mean, so, yeah. I'm but in coming. twenty and thirty years time, Mark, it might you know there'll be a threshold that it hits, right? Still must, yeah, certainly. Yeah. yeah, there's no look. There's never any guarantees um, um, on the expiry date of a property. Um, the reports are done on the day, um, and generally you can get a few years out of um, the reports we provide. But of course, you can't predict problems in the future. You could. Um, possibly have foundation sinkage turn up five years after the report's done, which you have no control over. So there are risks there um, when buying property that even even the best guys doing building reports can't pick up. So okay. just the way it is, yeah. Leave that big disclosure down the bottom, mate. <laughs> not covering exercise. <laughs> so really old places, really what foundations, bore and probably new roof and That's the way uh, electrical yep. plumbing. Uh, I mean, yep. one of the key things. Big one, yeah, big one is electrical. Um, you can be up for you know easily ten, fifteen thousand dollars on some of the older houses, and we quite often find um, perished wiring. So, yeah, big one to look out for. Yeah, just on that point, very important. Insurance yeah. seems such a, a big thing for pre nineteen forty five homes. What do you? Can someone come to you for uh, to get a, something done for the insurance company to, that's going to help them? Do you, do you have that, or can you do that? Yeah, certainly. So we um, we have insurance companies come to us, um, um, banks, um, and then your private um, vendors um, and buyers. So um, a common one is an insurance company will want us to check the house. Um, essentially the same report as a, a buyer or seller would get, um, and yeah, they'll request that and we'll go through the property and before they um, apply the insurance, they'll check out the report. Um, same goes with the banks. Um, so we're finding more and more now the banks are requesting reports. Um, so, yeah, good thing for us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Are you finding, Morgan, that like in today's market that you're turning up to brand new homes or just a couple of years old and, and people say that they've, um, builders have lost, lost the values of being a craftsman, right? Are you still seeing brand new homes? You must that are you're going, Jesus, certainly this thing. Certainly, yeah. Is that um, prevalent in Auckland or is it? It is, it is. There's actually an article um, in the Herald, there's been a couple um, end of last year, um, it was showing a lot of these big projects um, going on um, and there were certain people, certain, um, um, how could you put it, certain um, cultures coming in, um, immigrants coming in um, with quite cheap labour, um, minimal regulation and um, huge, huge flaws being found in um, foundations, wall cavities, um, all sorts. So going back to that question, people say, you know, it's a brand new house, why should I get a building report done? Well, sometimes um, it just pays to get one done anyway because you just don't know, even though it's brand new. Um, and bringing that question up, actually, my partner asked me the other night, one of her friends asked me, well, 
Dana's going to buy a house and it comes with a um, 10-year builder's guarantee. So she asked me, well, should we go and do a report there? Well, I said, um, yeah, well, well, we should because just because there's a guarantee there um, doesn't mean the builder can't cover things up or do any dodgy sort of business. So always recommend a building report regardless of the situation. For, you know, um, people buy cars and spend 100 bucks on a, say, a 10 grand car. Why don't you spend 500 bucks on a million dollar house? Just seems to make sense. Um, yeah, no. So, yeah, yeah. No, good. Um, if a family member tapped you on the shoulder and said, "Right, at Morg, I've got you know, I've got well, what is the medium in Auckland at the moment? Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars." Getting up there. So, so you know, whatever it is, right? I got eight hundred thousand dollars. What would you recommend is the best? Like, you must turn up to houses. Oh, yeah. Right, this is a, um, you know, it's a nineteen sixties fortress block and Remu. Um, you've got villas, bungalows, you know, there's some that little red flags would just go ping, ping. Bong. Yeah. 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 What, what, what would you consider are some of the, are some of the best homes that okay. here is built? Okay, right. So um, properties properties we find the least problems with, um, number one would be your, your brick and tiles. Um, brick and tiles with um, decent sized safites or eaves. Um, they tend to be um, yeah, almost almost bulletproof, but in saying that, of course, we still find problems time to time. Secondly would be uh, um, your timber weatherboard, weatherboard clad houses. Um, certainly um, a lot of the houses built in the older days because um, we actually find the builders cut less corners in the older days with the old school way of building. Um, we find no issues with flashings, which are, funny enough, often the issues in these later um, date built houses. So... Yep, your brick and tiles, then your weatherboards, um, pretty good, um, as long as your weatherboards are well painted and looked after. Um, and then towards the lower part of the heap, you'd have your hardy techs, and then of course your monolithic cladding um, properties, which come with all sorts of problems, as I'm sure people have read in the newspapers. And, yeah. yeah. What, what I saw, saw uh, apparent last year with the inspection that you did for one of my one-on-one buyers agency clients, and it shows the value of getting someone like yourself coming along. And I mean, we looked at this place and you just picked up straight away things that just didn't look right. I remember that one. Yeah, and there, was, <laughs> there were add-ons and there was uh, the carport had been turned into a garage and then there were so many things we ended up finding out that didn't even have, even have consent. I think it was moved. It was there, a shocker. Yeah, yeah, and it, it didn't even have consent to be there. Yeah, that's so right. That, that's something you might pick up from a building inspector that, you know, for 500 bucks that, you know, you're going to spend 400,000 or 500,000 on. Oh, certainly, yeah. You know, I can't um, can't really say enough how how important it is to get one. Um, we've had a few cases, um, not not so far this year, but last year I um, met two clients of mine, fortunately, at the wrong time after they'd already bought a property, um, and for some reason they'd gone to um, gone to an an auction, obviously unconditional, and purchased a house without a building report. Um, then they phoned me up after the um, the auction was done um, to find huge moisture readings all through the rear southern wall of the house, um, and yeah, anywhere from thirty to sixty thousand dollars in damages there. Um, for Good sake school of fees, yeah. <laughs> Good school, school fees. fees. <laughs> Someone else has got school fees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so no, it's a bit of a bit of a worry what can go on. Um, just on just on that, um, we'll start talking sort of moisture problems in the uh, leaky yeah. homes. And uh, can someone just get a moisture test and not get a building report? Certainly can. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And, um, what, and what's it involved? And what does it? What does it show? Is it foolproof or? Right, right. So um, we use a, a device called a Trotec T650. Now that's a dielectric moisture meter. Um, yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So basically, it just goes. Um, it, 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 it sends a penetration into the surface you're testing on, um, and gives us a reading back. And it's the it's the number one moisture um, reading tool that um, most guys use. Um, and on top of that, we also use a thermal imaging camera, um, so that picks up heat in the wall, which is directly relevant to moisture being in the wall. Because if there's wet patches in the wall, um, it brings back a cold temperature. So we use both um, those devices in conjunction. Um, now, in saying that, if you got that done, um, normally that would come under a, a verbal inspection because um, you're legally not actually allowed to do a written report solely on moisture. We have to 
be compliant with um, the code, um, which is 4306, um, which states that um, all written reports need to be fully detailed and comprehensive um, to the code. And if anybody wants to get hold of one of those copies off me, they can at a later date. Mm. So you're saying if you do a moisture report, you can't officially put it on? Not in the no, not if, it, report. not if it's only a moisture report. Okay. Yeah, then it has to be go go through the verbal. Um, however, if you order a full written report, um, of course that includes all the moisture right. testing, and you get that in documented. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll say just from it, you know, give more money from us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, it's the law. We can't put moisture readings um, um, on paper um, for, for various reasons. Yeah. Okay. Right. So if someone wants to just get a moisture test to prove that your place isn't leaky or whatever, they can just give us a call and we'll come around, come around verbally, run our meters around the house yeah. on site. Um, they have to be there. Yeah. If they're getting a verbal done. You um, still snap some photos of the uh, yeah, of the, of the readings. readings. Yeah. 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 Okay. Easiest right. time, you know, um, everyone's busy, right? Seven days a week, chat, chat, chat. I assume the, the hardest time to get a building inspection is on a Monday after a weekend of open homes. Certainly. What's the easiest day to get a building inspection? Okay, well, we, we, find, um, we find Monday to Tuesday is normally just unreal. Right. Like you said, everyone's been running around the weekend. Yeah, yeah. But it's quite funny that the weather affects everything, weather and different um, holiday seasons and all that sort of stuff affects things, so... We find after a, um, a rainy weekend, um, often a Monday or Tuesday will be quiet because no one's been out looking around. But most Mondays and Tuesdays um, are fairly busy. So I'd recommend um, anywhere from sort of Wednesday through to Saturday if you'd like to get a um, sort of guaranteed booking. But hey, look, okay. always ring up and we prioritise all our clients. So there, there are building inspectors and then there are building inspectors. There are property developers and then there are property developers. So what, <laughs> what are some of the questions that someone should, and they've been rife too, right, on fair go and all the, all the yeah, stuff on TV yeah. about, you know, people that get a building inspection and they find out that it's riddled with... It's rubbish. You know, yeah. and uh, so, so what, what, are the, what are the big mistakes that people make or what are the questions they should ask? Okay, so there's probably, probably three main questions. Um, the first one is, um, are you a builder? Um, or, or <laughs> a registered builder? Yeah, certainly. Um, you need to be ask if they're a builder. Um, ask if they're a licensed building practitioner, um, which is basically similar to a blue um, a blue ticket in Australia, um, where the government's bought in yeah. a regulating um, you know thing like that. So, LBP builder. Um, I think it's very important to ask how many years experience um, the inspector's got. Um, there's guys running around there, um, which I've heard of, they haven't been building at all, um, and they've just jimmied up some business, because unfortunately, um, there is a, um, a regulating code called 4306, but for some reason, the government hasn't made it 100% um, compulsory, so it's a bit of a worry, so make sure you ask these questions, um, and third and finally, you can um, um, get some peace of mind by asking if they belong to a accreditation um, group. So there's several in Auckland. Um, we're at the moment just getting accredited through Boynes, which is the building official institute of New Zealand. Um, and they, they up keep a very high standard of building reports. So yeah, that's probably the big, the big three ones to ask there. And liability insurance, so in the unlikely event that a building inspection, they make a Era, yes. Um, you guys obviously must have liability insurance. Certainly, yeah. that's that's actually something I missed. That's a big one. So, um, personal indemnity insurance is a must have. Yeah. So that that probably is the single biggest question I'd say to ask, um, and ask how much the cover goes up to. Yes. Um, very yeah. important. That's something else that a lot of guys don't have either. So, um, I think we'll find in the next six months there'll be a few companies on TV. I'd imagine. <laughs> Um, through Fair Go because there's just so many guys out there now running around charging peanuts for reports and uh, you're getting peanuts. So what's peanuts? If someone's off, you know, if, if the price is too low then something's wrong, right? What's, yeah. what's a standard three bedroom villa? 500 bucks. Five, so anything lower yeah. than 500 would be getting nervous. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, some guys are getting down towards 400. I mean, um, I'm not going to bag them but um, guys out there who are charging too. 200 bucks for a full written report, hey, look, something's not happening because they're not paying themselves for their time because they aren't spending enough time on the property. Mm -hmm. yeah, Big good. concern. Yep. Yeah.
Yeah. So a two hundred dollar building inspection be worth. <laughs> don't get it. Don't get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unless it's a verbal inspection, they can get down to sort of the two, three hundred buck, buck range because obviously a lot less time involved. Yeah. Uh, but written reports, two hundred dollars. Yeah. Beware. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right now, uh, moving on to one of the big topics: meth testing. Meth testing. Um, first of all, how, how many? You know, how, how many out of, out of ten houses, roughly? How many do, you, do they say let's do a meth test as well? Yeah. Right. Okay. So. Um, once again, it's a question everyone asks, um, should we meth test our house? Well, there's a few factors you can bring into it before going ahead and doing one. Um, um, the area it's in, um, you know, what sort of decile um, it is, are they, are they state houses? Um, yeah, once again, the area. Um, there were some facts that come out, I think it was October last year, in the Herald that one in three state houses in Auckland were testing positive for methamphetamine, um, whether that was recreational use or a full-on um, cookhouse. I just, I just, I think, guys, um, I had an auction property a while back from an, a lady who'd lived in the house in St. Helier's, right, for 40 years, and her grandchild come to live with her for three months, she's having trouble, so obviously, you know, that... That was a situation where the perfect area, the perfect lady that had lived there, and you know, tested positive for pee. So I think blanketly, you've sort of got to say there's so much risk for the purchase now. You just you'd be silly not to ask for it. Yeah. Because you yeah. just can't assume, can you? Certainly. Um, I'm getting an auction every week pulled because a buyer goes, does a pee test, positive reading. You know. There yeah. you go. Drama. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, the drug's just yeah running rampant in Auckland has been for the last ten years. Um, so. Like you said, um, in the St. Helier's property, well, I guess with that area, you wouldn't expect it, and it was there. So, yeah, big concern. Um, good to always get one done. So there's no real, no telltale signs ready to, you know, no, to work no, out and say, no. let's get one done. Yeah, yeah, just just good to get one done. I mean, um, I'm sure this um, St. Helier's home um, you were talking about was a pretty good nick. Oh, and, you uh, can imagine, it was just mint, but it was, amazing, just, yeah. it was just one of those situations that everyone was just like, what? You know, I, I had an auction on the weekend that I was talking to Mark about, and, and, and Massey, oh. you know, and, and papers missing, and wallpapers there, it's been rented for 40 years, and it's the demographic area, you're just going, mate, you know, someone's yeah, got done. to get a test on this. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right? Just common sense for yeah. males. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, we, I had one end of, oh, no, early last year in Tauranga, it was only three months old, new build, three months old, one tenant had gone in there. And the buyer just from Auckland just had a suspicion for whatever reason. Right. Did his um, P test and sure enough, some of the it came. making it in the yeah. three months. So I mean it was very minimal, you know, stuff they had to do. I think they repainted the little level was zero again. But right, right, right. But, um, right. and there are, obviously there are big factors of oh, sorry, bigger a big range of, of of when you do need to do some serious uh, remedial work and uh, yeah. some you don't have to do so much. Certainly, there's all, there's all the different um, different costs involved. So, like you just mentioned, if it's a um, um, a lighter amount come up, a lower reading come up, um, it can often be dealt with by simply a paint. Um, but in some cases, if it was a full on um, um, meth house cook lab, um, you could be looking at uh, literally bulldozing your property. Mm. So huge financial loss there. So if you, you get a reading, do you then advise them to go to another expert or? Certainly, yep, yep. We, um, our screening is a initial screen. Um, we basically give a yes or no indication. Um, and then we advise further investigation by a, um, a lab, a lab to come in and um, um, thoroughly investigate what levels there are um, and what areas um, the main levels are to um, be able to work out what to do, really. So you don't like putting on the rubber gloves and, you know, all that kind of stuff? No, thank you. No, 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 no. no. we just use our test kits and uh, we give you a yes and no and that's it. We prefer to stay away from that dangerous stuff. <laughs> in about a month's time, we're going to get a, a meth test company in here to, you know, talk about the... Oh, good. ...to go further with that, Perfect. so... Yeah. Okay, so, so what uh, what other issues you've seen around Auckland of late? Is there any other... something that just seems to be recurring or...? Um, no, it's pretty general. Something else I haven't mentioned apart from the um, the weather tightness and the meth testing would be um, drainage. Um, drainage around houses can be a big problem, um, especially with the Auckland weather. Um, we often see um, lack of fall on footpaths going into basements under properties, um, lack of um, drainage and retaining walls, so you end up with basically a soggy lawn. And uh, worst case, yeah, yeah, basement's full of water. 
So um, no, there's, there's any number of things that can go wrong with a house. Right. So um, do you do you then, do you, as a strategy, you know, I'm being, do you buy property in winter to see it as worse? Because in summer, yeah. um, you'd never see it, right? <laughs> when you had three, three months of hot weather, everything looks even like a moisture test, right? That's probably the best thing to do, to be honest, because winter's going to show everything up. Um, good call, but obviously it's not always feasible. Right. Practical yeah. people to do that, but um, yeah. no, you're right. Um, you go bust for six months, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, like absolutely. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other thing I've seen, I've seen a couple of places in, in winter, in fact, with it, is when the house is built on the side of a hill yes. and half the house is up against the bank. Should you be looking at anything? Well, what are the things you should be looking at? There right. to make sure that the, the exterior is not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So first of all, the smell. Yeah, yeah, first of all, you smell. Come and smell the place. Normally, you can smell moisture straight away. Um, see if there be any signs of um, rusty hardware or fixings in that in that room or that um, adjacent to that wall. Okay. Uh, where it is moisture, it tends to um, make any metals rust, um, and then obviously mold. So smell, mold, um, and rusty hardware. Um, as a big indicator, and then obviously our um, handheld moisture meter pushed against it, that would give you the reading. So, right. um, yeah, and then there's ways of dealing with it whether you want to dig it out, put drainage in, um, mold seal it, um, but that's further on down the road. Main thing is finding out is there a problem or not. Yep. yep. Excellent. Okay, well, that's, um, that's fantastic. Got any more questions for? Uh Mr. Morgan here. No, no, he's Aaron. pretty well. He's pretty well nailed it down, so it's good. Okay, it's, it's, right. it's not all about you. You've just provided the information. Yeah, exactly. Today. But, but, but if someone else wants to get hold of you, what's the what's the best phone number or the way to get hold of you? Oh, and, thanks. And we will put that on the site. But. Oh, thanks, Mark. Yeah. So um, look, um, if you want to book an inspection, um, ring 0800 0015, um, and our admin lady Irene will help you with any queries um, or booking. So. Um, yeah, thanks very much, Mark, for having me on here. Yeah, no worries. Sure I'm sure that. people got a, a, a bit out of it. And, um, and uh, yeah, what I like about our users is a, is a, a good example for uh, when I talk about our one-on-one buyer's agency service to show we don't try to stitch people up. <laughs> we, we, we were pay, paying us to yeah. give them a service to see if they should be buying this property we found. Oh, them. definitely. Happy and, then, and then we got you. You found an issue with it. They didn't buy it. Yeah. Great. They found, they found a great property. Yes. That particular client about three weeks later. So... It's all good. So um, a few more auctions coming up this week, Aaron? Yeah, a few more auctions. Plenty of panic before uh, before Easter. Oh, right. Um, so course. lots of panic out there. So, you know, just common sense prevails. i got one last question for Morgan. You know, you've, you've crawled under a few houses and a few cavities. What's the strangest thing you've found? Oh, screw it. You um, found a tin of money? <laughs> yeah. No, unfortunately, no. No. No treasure, but plenty of, plenty of dead cats and condoms. All right, um, <laughs> so uh, it gets pretty rough under there, so I earn my money. <laughs> yeah. oh, this, right. is why, this is why Aaron's on the show, earning his money with questions like that. <laughs> thanks uh, to be asked. Yeah, of course. Great stuff. Hey, thanks, Aaron. Uh, thanks, Morgan. We'll, um, and we'll, uh, thanks, everyone, for listening, and we'll uh, see you again in a week's time. Cheers.